Hello, in this video blog, I just want to uh, finish up something that I had alluded to in one of my uh, video blogs a couple of days ago. This is related to my experience with the, uh, you know, the civil servants of India and how they think. Um, so I won't go into any names or any details at all. Uh, this is a general comment that I'm making. Uh, it relates to the, the complete absence of analysis of any uh, basic incentives within the senior most levels of the Indian government and we know how poor the politicians are uh, the kind of you know junk we are getting um, we had some decent quality leaders I would say at least who are competent uh, intellectually uh, when India became independent but since then we've actually lost even the basics of uh, intelligence leave alone the ability to think uh, which is you know much higher I was arguing the need for incentives within the civil service to ensure accountability and this person was essentially saying that now you can't this is all about motivation you know he gave me example of Bhagat Singh and so on and and apparently according to this person therefore everyone should be a Bhagat Singh uh, in order to be a civil servant of India so I, th I think the, the kind of ridiculousness of this is so obvious but uh, I explained that look uh, yes, people may join the civil service for various reasons, including in my case, for example, the, you know, my desire to help the, the to, to grow India. And of course, I didn't know how to do it, but I joined the civil service, hoping to learn how to do it. Uh, unfortunately, of course, within the civil service, no one told me anything. But what I was indoctrinated upon was to do those kind of World Bank schemes and others, which are essentially welfare programs designed to destroy, destroy India. And we also had this massive uh, self reliant policies of Indira Gandhi, uh, anti-liberalization uh, policies when I joined, uh, much later did they become a bit more free. But even then, we hardly had any genuine good economic policy. So we, we what I learned was basically nothing while, while I was in the civil service. Uh, I had to learn everything from outside. Uh, so the the idea that you know these um, civil servants are somehow going to be doing this uh, thing sensibly with the government because because somehow they are very motivated uh, they are Bhagat Singhs essentially <laughs> I think it's the most jocular idea most big of a bit, bit of a joke um, anyone with a bit of you know sense can understand that but of course um, as I said very senior officers in the civil service of India do not understand that and they do not understand that there's a thing called a participation constraint and incentive constraint I actually explained to these people I said I can explain to you in a much greater length what is meant by these kind of uh, incentives uh, but of course there's no interest the other quick comment I want to make before uh, I forget is this other uh, officers comments and apparently the accountability can be ensured if we have uh, you know if we ensure that civil servants in India are uh, kept in a particular position for three years or whatever, you know, they're currently being very rapidly transferred by politicians and so apparently this the idea of uh, Stopping the transfers is very important and Then I was like are you are you a bit you know, how do you think people do you think that the politicians are doing this because They they love to destroy the country well, what are politicians doing this for? They're doing, they've got two motivations. One is they want to make sure that they want to make money while they're there in that job. And, I, and that again relates to the incentives of the electoral system. If we don't understand the incentives of the electoral system in India, we don't understand how politicians behave. So politicians want to, first of all, reshuffle the whole thing so that all the corrupt officers report to them number one there's a big competition for the most corrupt officer in fact uh, the most corrupt officers generally report to the chief ministers and maybe to the home minister and so on so basically that's where the biggest money is to be made through the police system and through the uh, you know permissions or, or approvals that the chief minister gives uh, to various uh, the blessing to various kinds of activities in the state so this is where uh, I guess the first part of the story about transfers the second part of the story is accountability Yes, the politicians do want accountability as well, uh, at least at some level, because they have to report back to, and get support from their from their people. But they cannot fire the people who, who are uh, performing badly. They cannot do that. Uh, what they can do at the most is transfer people. So, uh, and transfer doesn't really mean anything because a person has the same salary and they just move from one chair to the other within a secretariat. So, you know, if you're transferred within uh, the capital of capital city as an IAS officer, you hardly move from one point to the other. You're just from one chair to the other inside the same secretariat. In fact, you might not even move your chair, which is what happened to me. Uh, you just remain in the same chair and your portfolios uh, keep changing. 
Oh, so, you know, this is how the, the system works in India, the transfer system. So, uh, but the net result of that is very clear that you do not have any time to build expertise. Although, as I would argue that the IS officers are simply incapable of understanding the basics of policy anyway. So it doesn't really matter how many years you put them. They're totally in, unfit to, to, to provide policy advice. And our politicians, of course, are totally unfit either uh, as well. So the net result of the combination is, uh, is, is a disaster. But the idea that some IS officer will tell me, you know, uh, that the transfers should be somehow uh, you know stopped and that's going to be solving the problem it's like what how does it solve any problem why are you saying this thing in the first place because the system gives politicians only one power they the central government controls everything else and these officers cannot be fired in any case politicians incentives are very clear as well so politicians are going to going to use transfer uh, system and you can't stop that that is the only power they have so and uh, so why are you saying this after 70 years of independence don't we understand how the system works and and if we do then why are we not saying let's change the system what really frustrates me with these civil you know senior civil servants that some of them i i i respect a lot as well as individuals but the net result is that i mean they're honest people the good people and i i respect their intentions let's say but the net result is that this kind of thinking is disastrous for india Anyway, uh, I really don't want to spend too much time on this. I, I have, uh, you know, other things to do at the moment. And I want to focus on some broader writings and so on, as I have mentioned on my blog uh, earlier today. But I just thought I'll mention this issue, which came up a few days ago. I have, in the meanwhile, disconnected with all these eyes officers. I, I really want to stay away from this, you know, business of India. It's just frustrating to want to see that uh, people who are simply so incapable of thinking. And I'm looking at journalists and I'm looking at... Uh, you know the academics and them looking at the entire space the bureaucracy the the, the business people as well i mean if you uh, remember some of you might uh, remember my comments i made after my um, horasis uh, trip uh, to interlaken and I, I really was like amazed at the kind of thinking of these these uh, senior uh, uh, private sector leaders of india they are pretty much the same as any other useless intellectual they simply cannot think they don't think straight uh, i i think india has got caught in a completely low level equilibrium of mental thought and there's never been anybody to challenge them and they've never they don't want to be challenged as well so the net result is uh, india remains the outlier of the world in terms of the worst performance possible on every single field of uh, enterprise of human enterprise uh, so let me just do a few things that i want to do and i want to write basically you know good books on uh, well i mean books whether they're good or bad i want to write books on general principles of freedom and economics and also for children and I might periodically write, uh, you know, have a few blog posts like this. Uh, thanks. Bye.